All right, welcome to the shop. I decided to make a video on uh, tank revitalization. Okay, so I put my tanks into maintenance mode, and because things were starting to get scarce, I was starting to get like to the point where I couldn't get brightener, I couldn't get distilled water for almost a month. I decided to jump into other hobbies and you know work on different projects. So I want to kind of show you a few things um, because I never really did a lot of like long breaks from electroforming. I did, you know, like maybe a week or two, but nev never like almost two or three months. So I want to kind of show you some things that I have learned about uh, storage of liquid. I, I will tell you some stories about like things that I, I have learned from my past okay so that way you don't fall into those so just in case you ever need to like let's say take a, a vacation from your liquid I know this should have been like addressed a while ago but I, I would never feel like I wanted to release a video where I didn't have all the information um, and then just let you guys do that so I'd, r I'd rather learn from my mistakes and then show you the mistakes rather than say hey you should do this with no prior you know any kind of experience and then <laughs> when it fails you'll be like hey you said this so I'm going to show you you know the, even the mistakes I made uh, when it came down to long-term maintenance and storage all right so this is electroforming tank uh, what I've learned from the, my past was it never let it dehydrate and the reason for that is the sulfides build up at the very bottom the acid loses its acidity, um, it turns into a kind of a, like a powder, and then when you go to rehydrate your tank, you're going to have an awful contamination issue of super sulfides, because you're going to probably want to re, re uh, pH level your tank, so now you have extra sulfides in your tank, and um, just the, the acid and the sulfide balance becomes way too far off, and you have to filter that probably like four or five times. Done this in the past, never do it again. So what I did is first I took off, took out all my anodes, okay? And then put a piece of plastic saran wrap over the top of this and I just let it set, okay? Every once in a while I would see it fall below that line quite a bit, like maybe an inch or two, and I would add distilled water. Now distilled water became very rare during this time, so I only did this a few times because I wanted to preserve my distilled water. I mean, it became super rare, distilled water, right? It's like the toilet paper of water became rare in my area. I found different sources now. You don't, you didn't, I didn't need to go to a grocery store to get distilled water. There's a wonderful place in my area that serves all kinds of distilled water needs. I didn't know that at the time, and I didn't learn that until like two months in. But always have you know a few jugs set off to the side just in case you need to do that. Rehydrate it. Don't let it go to complete crystal. Always take out your fish aquarium heater. I'll show you why here in a second. Um, of course, you would unplug your fish aquarium heater. And if you don't, if you take and leave your anode in, the acid level, let's say the water dehydrates, right? Your acid levels will rise because there's no water keeping the acid in check. It will eat away at the anode and then your system will become super dark. And the super dark is just super saturated um, copper sulfate in the water. And when you go to use that tank again, uh, let's say I rehydrate it, you're gonna have so much copper sulfate in there, you're going to have to probably almost pour out half a gallon and just revitalize it with more distilled water just to rebalance all the sulfides and everything else. So make sure you are removing your anode if you are not using your tank. And if you don't do that, make sure your water levels are correct. But again, pull out your anode. It's so much better. So this one, and you're gonna hear my furnace. It's really super loud in the background. Sorry about that. 
this one right here. Um, so this is a plating tank. You know, what a plating tank happens is the acid levels are really super high in this tank. I don't do a whole lot of plating right now or ever did. Um, I did that as a cosmetic thing for some of my compositions to have a very super shiny coat um, on very detailed pieces. So this thing right here, this because I didn't really care about this tank at all um, and I let it go, I was like, this is unplugged, but it's setting in the solution. So what happened is the water <laughs> evaporated out of the tank. What you're looking at is pure acid probably. Um, and then even this glass right here, this is not the right type of glass. So the glass weakened and there's a crack, there's a hairline crack in it. So the the metal that is in this material, okay, see that gray stuff? There's a metal in that. I'm gonna guess it's iron or some kind of steel. Find traces of that leaked out into the bath and then instantly turned it green. Cool stuff, right? So that's definitely either a steel contamination because of the green, um, tin, cadmium, and I believe lead will do that too. Not that color green though. So that is almost 100% sure that's a steel contamination problem. Can it be used again? No, no. It, I mean, it would take a lot of dumbing this tank out to get it back. So that material is definitely lost. Again, I didn't really care about this tank. I do have to dispose of it. I'm going to have to let it dehydrate out fully, uh, let it turn back into a solid, and then I can dispose of it properly. So as a liquid, because it has so much acid in it, I can't dispose of this material correctly. I have to let it dehydrate. So, it's going to slowly turn to a crystal. Oh, third tank, you can see beautiful blue, okay? I maintained that for three months, so I got this tank and I got that tank. They're both the same color blue. Again, the only thing I did was I took out everything out of it, I put a piece of plastic over the top, saran wrap, and I maintained it as far as the water level is concerned, and that was it. This tank should be good to go. I just have to do a carbon filter on it. So let me show you what my rack mount carbon filter system did over a three month period that I was not aware of. All right, so this is a rack filter system. So it racks a liquid into a container. Uh, sucks liquid in, runs it through a filter, and then deposits it into a carboy, okay? That's ran by a vacuum, so the vacuum vacuums the liquid into this. And then another pump goes and a uh, very low volume of compressed air will go into here and then push the liquid back out, then back into the tank. And the advantage of this is I can suck up this whole tank of liquid, I can clean out the entire tub, and then I can deposit the liquid back in. So that is the advantage of a rack mount system. After, I would say, three or four years of use, it's been amazing. Finally, after having it sit for three months of not being used, I came across this. So this I thought was glass, right? It would only stand to reason that this was high quality material that I bought on Amazon. I thought it was glass, it sounds like glass, it feels like glass, but nope, it's plastic. So when I basically gave up, um, this for a little bit. It looks like it got a little bit of an acid 
buildup right there and it cracked that plastic because it's not an acid proof plastic. So if you do, if you have watched a video about rack mounting and if you did buy that straw based upon my recommendations, um, hey, it's not glass. And I would watch that right there. Um, you, if you have a friend that's into like glass blowing, you could easily make one of these things. It's just a cane with a little thing at the end. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be making one of these. I do have a glass blowing rig. I think I'm going to make my own rather than order another one. But that's kind of where I'm at right now. I came across that today. I was like, hey, I'm just going to revamp the entire, or not revamp the entire system. I'm just start out producing a few things. But then I came across this, so I gotta take the time to fix this before I can go into this. Pretty cool. So, lesson learned. Um, one, always check your plastics, especially if you're building something complex with it, that has acid going through it. Make sure that your tubes are acid resistant. Resistant and proof are two different things. Um, if you get a proof, acid proof, is very stiff okay it is very stiff and acid proof is uh, plastic I, I believe it's P T F T I'd have to look it back that up because um, it's been a few days so PTFT is I think the plastic so if you use couplers again resource that before you use my words but so if you buy couplers, they cannot be nylon, they cannot be brass, definitely not brass. They have to be an acid proof plastic. Okay? And the hose could be acid resistant, I found. It's pretty good and maintain its flexibility. Good times. If you do get acid resistant, do not store it in the acid. Okay, I'll we'll store it to the side. All right, well those are the things I've learned over the past three months of you know, just kind of having the system shut down a little bit. I hope that helps a few individuals that are thinking about maybe, you know, putting aside the hobby for a second. It's still an awesome hobby. I'm gonna get, I think we're gonna make a video about markets and then maybe what I kind of envision what a market looks like now. Um, you know, like going to a market or what a market's gonna do in the future. So look out for that video. But for right now, I wanna keep this as a the maintenance, long-term maintenance video something title. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, if you're interested in any of the, how to make the liquid, how to, make the tanks, how to uh, maintain the tanks on a daily basis and all that good stuff. I do have a school, the link is provided below if you like this quality entertainment and along with learning through scaffolded lessons. Just click the link and take my class and you'll be electroforming in no time. Have a good one.